When the Go-Get Air G750 was first introduced at Oshkosh 2023, most people saw just another sleek white composite parked in a sea of LSAs. Nice paint, glass cockpit, Rotax on the nose, nothing the flight line hadn't seen before. But behind that airplane was more than a fresh design. It was the latest chapter in a project that started as a one-off perfect little tourer over a decade earlier. And it was being pitched as the poster child for the next generation of light aircraft under Mosaic. Since that debut, the g 750s story has moved fast. The Slovenian factory has gone from small batch builds to a proper CAA-approved production line. The airplane itself has evolved into a 2 plus 2 tourer with a parachute, long legs, and cruise speeds that genuinely nip at the heels of older certified four-seaters, all while running on Rotax fuel burns. And just as the piston version started to get attention, Go Get Air bolted a tiny regenerative turboprop to the front, flew the G750TP, and turned it into a flying demo of what a green mini turbine GA machine might look like. So, what can you get today? Right now, you can buy a factory built G750 with a Rotax on the nose and chose anything from the 100 horsepower Rotax 912 IS to the 160 horsepower Rotax 916 IS. A whole airframe ballistic parachute is part of the package on most builds. Gogatair even lists ready-for-delivery aircraft on their site, including a brand-new 914UL G750 and a used 914UL demo aircraft, both factory-built or factory-assisted. So from a buyer's point of view in Europe, this is a real in-production airplane, not a CAD render and a dream. Then there's the headline grabber, the G750TP with the Turbotech TPR90 regenerative turboprop. This isn't vaporware either. The TPR90 G750 first flew in September 2024, and by 2025, Go Get Air was saying they'd got CAA approval and had delivered a small turbine aircraft to a customer, so at least one G750TP is actually out in the wild. AOPA is already quoting it as a catalog option at roughly $378,000 for a 916IS piston G750, $495,000 for the turbine version, and about $60,000 more if you want a full Garmin IFR panel. So yes, the turbine is real, but right now it's early adopter, unicorn customer territory. Not a mass market choice. So what box does it live in? In Europe, the paperwork looks like this. Go Get Air has a Slovenian Civil Aviation Authority CAA production certificate, so the factory is approved and audited. The airplanes themselves are sold as factory-built experimental or ultralight-type machines under Slovenian rules, with a 750kg maximum takeoff weight and recreational use around the EU. The company says they're working toward full ESA certification, but there's no CS23 type certificate yet. So right now in Europe, think of it as a very polished factory experimental or UL from an approved manufacturer, not a fully certified DA40 class GA type. In the United States, the picture is different again. Scissortail Aerosport in Tulsa is the official North American completion center, and as of today, they can only sell the G750 as experimental, previously as experimental exhibition, and now also as an experimental amateur-built kit, finished with Scissortail's help. The plan is that from around mid-2026, once the new FAA Mosaic rules are live, the G750 should be able to come in as a factory-built light sport LSA. But that's the future, not today. So for a U.S. buyer right now, you're choosing between an experimental exhibition import or an EAB kit where the factory and scissor tail do most of the heavy lifting. But you cannot yet walk in and buy it as a turnkey, fully certified SLSA or Part 23 airplane. But how good is this aircraft? Using the modern Rotax IS versions, the 915 and 916, as the real cross-country G750, and use the 912 IS numbers as a sanity check. Depending on who you ask, the brochures say the factory and dealers quote an optimal cruise of around 145 knots, with the more powerful engines up to 160 horsepower, and they also talk about an optimum flight speed of 132 knots at around 23 liters an hour, which is roughly 6.1 U.S. gallons per hour. AOPA's spec sheet on the Rotax 914 demo reports a max level speed of 152 knots indicated and a cruise at 75% power at 2,000 feet of 122 knots on about 4.8 gallons per hour. 
Real owner feedback for a 912 IS puts it at 131 knots at maximum continuous power, burning 6.1 gallons. But the factory pilot typically cruises at 120 knots, burning around 3.7 gallons. So what's reality at 75% and at 60-ish percent? Putting all that together, smoothing the marketing, and looking at real numbers, the 915 and 916 fast crews at high power, say 75 to 85%, sits in the 135 to 145 knots range, depending on weight and altitude, with fuel flow in the 6 to 7.5 gallon per hour ballpark. Normal crews, which is what most owners actually use at around 60 to 65 percent, tends to sit in the 120 to 130 knots range, with fuel flows around 5 to 6 gallons per hour, And that lines up with the AOPA 914 demo that got 127 knots at a little more than 5 gallons at 3,000 feet in an economy setting. Slow economy cruise in long range mode means that if you're happy at 110 to 120 knots, you can pull it back into the 4 to 5 gallon regime with a 912, 914, or 915 and stretch the legs toward the 800 to 1,000 nautical mile headline ranges. From testimonials and demo flights, the factory guy in the 912 IS basically says that yes, 131 knots is there, but he usually cruises around 120 knots to burn about 3.7 U.S. gallons per hour, and the U.S. dealer flies economy crews around 127 knots on just over 5 gallons in the 914 demo and pitches it as Cessna 172 speeds on LSA fuel burn. So day to day, the picture is simple. A typical leg sits at 120 to 130 knots on 5 to 6 gallons an hour at mid-altitudes around 3 to 8,000 feet, and you land with sensible reserves but still feel like you've covered DA-40-ish distance on LSA-like fuel. Loading is the next question, and structurally it's 2 plus 2, but operationally it's a 2 adults plus kids or bags airplane. So treat it like a roomy two-seater with occasional extra seats and not a full-fat four-seat tourer. The hard numbers from factory and sales data show a maximum takeoff weight of 1,653 pounds, fuel at 36.5 U.S. gallons or around 220 pounds, and a typical empty weight between 882 pounds and 970 pounds from the 912 IS to the 915 IS, giving a useful load roughly 680 to 770 pounds. AOPA's tested 914 demo had an empty of 977 pounds, a useful of 676 pounds, and a payload with full fuel of 447 pounds. In the cabin, the front takes two full-size adults with very generous width almost in DA-40 territory, and the rear is marketed as two children up to around 55 pounds each with a small baggage area behind them. Using the AOPA example with a useful around 670 pounds and fuel at 220 pounds, full fuel with two big adults at 180 pounds each plus bags gives 220 pounds of fuel, 360 pounds of front seat people, 580 pounds total, and leaves around 90 pounds for baggage or maybe a child. That's the sweet spot. Full fuel, two adults, decent bags, huge range. Full fuel with four adults at 180 pounds each gives 720 pounds of people plus 220 of fuel, a total of 940 pounds, which is well above a 6 and 70 pound useful load, meaning not legal. To make four adults work at all, you'd have to drain fuel down to maybe 25 to 30 gallons or less and accept a much shorter leg and possibly smaller people. And even then, the airplane is not really marketed for four full-size adults because the rear is explicitly kids or extra baggage. Realistic four-seat use means two adults at 170 pounds each and two kids at 55 pounds each, giving four 50 pounds of humans. And with full fuel at 220 pounds, you're at 670 pounds, right on the AOPA useful load figure, with no baggage. So you can do two adults and two kids in full fuel if everyone is light and you don't bring half your house. In practice, most owners will use it as two adults, full fuel, 44 to 66 pounds of bags as the primary mission, occasionally adding one child or a very light third person and shaving fuel, and rarely running two adults and two kids on partial fuel for a short hop. If you mentally group it with DA-40s or SR-20s as a true four-adult machine, you'll constantly be fighting useful load, 
but if you group it with the VL3 or TL Sparker as a fast two-seater with optional seats, it suddenly looks generous. Range is the next piece, and the book numbers, depending on engine and marketing line, include factory and dealer claims up to 1,000 to 1,100 nautical miles at 65% power in long-range settings. They also talk about up to 9 hours of endurance on the 912 IS at low fuel flows. An owner with a 912 IS says 131 knots at maximum continuous power on 6.1 gallons an hour and crews at 120 knots on 3.7 gallons an hour with range over 9 hours or around 1,000 nautical miles on 36.5 gallons. Reality at normal crews for a 915 or 916 version using fuel at 36.5 gallons usable is 120 to 130 knots at 5 to 6 gallons an hour. At 6 gallons, you have just over 6 hours to dry, so think 4.5 to 5 hours practical with reserves. And at 125 knots, that's roughly 560 to 630 nautical miles of real range with IFR reserves and some headwind margin. If you're willing to baby it and pull back to 110 knots at 4 gallons an hour, you're nudging into the 800 plus nautical mile zone in still air. So the 1,000 to 1,100 mile numbers are perfect day, slow cruise, use every drop figures, mostly for marketing and ferry legs. Your day-to-day -day realistic planning number for the 915 or 916 is closer to 500 to 700 nautical mile legs at 120 to 130 knots on 5 to 6 gallons an hour with proper reserves. And that's still firmly DA40 class reach on way less fuel. On a typical leg, Put yourself in the left seat on a 350 to 500 nautical mile cross country where you load two people full fuel weekend bags and still feel comfortable on weight and balance. You climb at 900 to 1,000 feet per minute into the mid single thousands, set 120 to 130 knots, see 5 to 6 gallons an hour on the Dynon or Garmin, and watch the range ring sit well beyond your destination. Ride quality is more light four-seater than twitchy LSA thanks to the wing loading and you land after three to four hours with an hour or more in the tanks and you never once thought about mixture or cowl flaps. So the speed is roughly DA40 light, the fuel is closer to a modern LSA or VL3 than a legacy four-seater, the seats are two plus two with very honest fine print about who fits in back, and the mission is Excellent for two-person touring with big airplane vibes and okay for occasional family hops if you're disciplined with weight and fuel. But what about the turboprop version? If the Go-Get Air G750 with the TPR90 comes to the market, the question is, where does it stand in the four-seater market? What the G750TP actually looks like on paper starts with the airframe basics, which are the same as the piston G750. But the turbine version is equipped with the TurboTech TP-R90, which delivers around 140 horsepower max continuous. The A4 Aviation Turbine brochure quotes a 50-foot obstacle takeoff distance of about 1,260 feet and a climb rate of rough 1,650 feet per minute, which is better than the Rotax 915 version. But Go Get Air's own spec sheet puts takeoff over a 50-foot obstacle at about 1,350 feet for the turbine, with a max continuous climb rate around 1,150 feet per minute. Something is going on here. And remember, A4 Aviation is Go Get Air's Western Europe distributor and integration partner, not some random blog or forum commenter. This aircraft burns Jet A, with claimed fuel burn as low as the Rotax. Mojagrip and others are quoting early demo numbers around 147 knots at about 8 gallons per hour and something like 1,500 miles of range, but that's early testing and marketing, not final POH gospel. So realistically, if and when it's in customer hands, you're looking at something like cruise in the mid-140 knot range. Uh, if you'll burn probably 6 to 8 gallons per hour on Jet A, depending on how hard you push it, and range comfortably 900 to 1,200 nautical miles with reserves in economy cruise territory, which puts it faster than a 172 or PA-28, and roughly in the DA-40, P-2010, SR-20 band, but below SR-22 levels. So, what does it compete with? 
It lines up more naturally against the modern Jet A and efficient four-seaters, including the Diamond DA40NG with a max cruise around 154 knots on Jet A diesel at about 5.1 gallons per hour at 60% power, with range around 940 nautical miles and a useful load around 904 pounds. The Technam P2010 TDI, with a max cruise around 140 knots at about 5.2 gallons per hour on Jet A, with range up to around 1,000 to 1,300 nautical miles, and a useful load around 880 pounds. And machines like the Sling TSI and MCR 4S Evolution, the fast Rotax 9 15 powered four seat experimentals in the 145 to 160 knot bracket with similar useful loads and ranges plus the Cirrus SR20, which sits at 215 horsepower and around 145 knots cruise as a certified four-seater, but heavier and Avgas burning. Where the G750TP differs inside that group is that it's Jet A turbine, not diesel or Avgas. It's fixed gear, composite, shoot, and glass, like a baby SR or DA40 hybrid, and it's likely to cruise in the same mid-140 knot region as the DA40, P2010, and SR20, but with turbine smoothness, slightly lower useful load, and in many markets a lighter certification or UL experimental regime. So the slot is best described as a Jet A, turbine smooth 2 plus 2 European Tourer with performance like a DA40, P2010, or SR20, and cost and complexity more like a high-end Sling TSI or MCR4S. This plane can be a healthy niche hit. Despite that production scale is tiny, and AOPA notes that go -Get Air had delivered 23 aircraft worldwide since 2013, including the first TPR-90 turbine customer delivery, and TurboTech themselves expect to deliver about 50 R-90 engines in 2025, with capacity up to 500 annually if demand materializes. And even if every other R90 went into G750 TPs, which they won't since VL3, Bristel, TL, and UAVs are also customers, that's still dozens per year, not hundreds. It's also a premium early adopter machine, and a price around $350,000 is great, but not cheap versus a used SR20, DA40, 182, or a Sling TSI build. And with a turbine, a new engine type, and a small OEM, many conservative buyers will wait and see how real-world fuel burn lands, what maintenance actually costs, and how support and parts look after 5 to 10 years. So that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It helps me a lot.